Hello for the last time. I'm Ms. Havzala, and we are going to continue working on determining the important ideas and summarizing a text. Today, we'll have the chance to read and compare a firsthand and a secondhand account of the same event. For this lesson, you will need either a piece of paper or the district packet, a pen or a pencil, and a turn and talk partner. For your turn and talk partner today, you can use someone in your family, a friend, a pet, pretend friend, a pretend conversation with your favorite celebrity or your favorite teacher, and you can share in whatever language feels most comfortable to you. Let's take a moment to review what we have done. So if you look on the left side of the screen, what we have done is we have read a picture book of Rosa Parks by David Adler. We've taken an excerpt, so just a piece of that picture book, and we've looked for what the main ideas are. And so we were able to find main ideas and from making a list of those main ideas, we created a summary. So the summary had the most important parts of the story or the excerpt, I should say, not every little detail. Today, we're going to reread a piece of that. We're going to hear a firsthand account of the same event and we're going to discuss how the accounts are alike and different. We're still going to practice using when you're giving your opinion using the reason I think this is. So you wanna make sure that whenever you have your opinion, you can say, well, why is that your opinion? Why do you think that? And then you can say, well, in the text it said, or I think this, the reason I think this is because I read in the text or I know that. So we wanna keep practicing using that stem so we can support our opinion with evidence from the text. So we're just gonna read this one page from a picture book of Rosa Parks. And this is just this one event. So we're not really focusing on her entire lifespan, but we're just gonna look at this one event in time and think about the important ideas as you read. So I'll read it out loud and I want you to follow along um, as I read it. And we're gonna take a moment afterwards to think about what were the important ideas in this section. So 12 years later on Thursday, December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks met James Blake again. Rosa was coming home from her work as a tailor's assistant at Montgomery department store. She got on the Cleveland Avenue bus and took a seat in the middle section. African Americans were allowed to sit in the back and in the middle section too, as long as no white passenger was left standing. Second paragraph. At the next stop, some white passengers got on and because the bus was crowded, moved to the middle section where Rosa was sitting. The driver told the four African American passengers in Rosa's road to get up. Three of them did, but not Rosa Parks. She had paid the same fare as the white passengers. She knew it was the law in Montgomery that she gave up her seat, but she also knew the law was unfair. James Blake called the police and Rosa Parks was arrested. So I'm going to take a moment now to think about what are the important ideas that we just read just in these two paragraphs and try practice using the reason I think this is because. So the reason I think, so if you say an important idea was, it was 12 years later, then you're gonna say, an important idea from this section was, it was 12 years later. The reason I think this is important is because, and then now you get to add a little bit more. Okay, so what are the important ideas in the section of the book you just heard? And who is telling about the events in this book? What in the book makes you think so? So that's asking the point of view kind of, who is the person that's describing this right now? Okay, so remember, try to use the reason I think this is because and turn and talk to your partner. Okay, so we're gonna think about what you and your partner talked about, and we're gonna see if we can put them on this chart. So we're comparing a picture book of Rosa Parks, and we're gonna compare that with something we're gonna read in a second, that's Rosa Parks, My Story. And if you look at the title of this chart, it says comparing accounts of Rosa Parks on the bus. So we're not taking a look at Rosa Parks' entire life and comparing um, those, two, those two accounts. We're just looking at a quick little snapshot, and that's just Rosa Parks on the bus. So let's take a look at what you might have said. You might have noted something important from that section was Rosa sits in the middle of the bus. You might have also said she refuses to give up her seat for white passengers. You might have also said Jake, James Blake calls the police and Rosa is arrested. You also might have noted it's a secondhand account. And just to review, secondhand account means it's not the person who was there. So if we're 
reading a story about an event that was an earthquake and you were not at the earthquake, but you write about it, that's a secondhand account because you were not there. You either had to research, you had to interview someone, or you had to look at other firsthand accounts and compile a secondhand account. So it means you were not there. So David A. Adler was not there during this time. He could have researched, he could have read other books, or he could have interviewed someone in order to write this account. Now is kind of the part that I really have been waiting for because we get to read an excerpt, so not the whole thing, but we're gonna read an excerpt from Rosa Parks, My Story. This is an autobiography, and in the corner you see, in, like in the margin I have written, an autobiography is the story of a person's life written by that person. Okay, so that's the difference between a biography and an autobiography. Autobiography is they wrote it themselves. Sometimes they have a, a writing partner, they might have an illustrator too. Um, and so they, they are writing it firsthand, saying because they were there, either they're describing their life, they're describing an event, events in their life. But the firsthand account is often when you are reading a story about an event or about a person's life, firsthand account is the way to go. We are reading a story about Rosa Parks. There is no one better at all in the world to hear about the story of Rosa Parks than Rosa Parks herself. If you're reading an event, and this is this is an event that takes place during civil rights times, um, and so we want to hear about civil rights struggle from people who were struggling to get their civil rights, from people who were being treated unfairly. So it's really important if you're reading about an event where there was a particular group who was being discriminated against that you are hearing from that group. So we really wanna read stories if we're talking about the bus boycott from people who were at the bus boycott, people who were being discriminated against. So we wanna hear those black voices and those stories from the people who were really there experiencing it because they are pretty much going to be the authority on those events and, the, and their lives. So, that's why I'm kind of excited to read this part. And so excerpt from Rosa Parks, My Story by Rosa Parks with Jim Haskins. When I got off from work that evening of December 1st, I went to Court Square as usual to catch the Cleveland Avenue bus home and try to follow along if you can. I didn't look to see who was driving when I got on and by the time I recognized him, I had already paid my fare. It was the same driver who had put me off the bus back in 1943, 12 years earlier. He was still tall and heavy with red rough looking skin, and he was still mean looking. I didn't know if he had been on that route before. They switched the drivers around sometimes. I do know that most of the time if I saw him on a bus, I wouldn't get on. I saw a vacant and empty seat in the middle section of the bus and took it. I'm on the second paragraph now. I didn't even question why there was a vacant seat, even though there were quite a few people standing in the back. If I had thought about it at all, I would probably have figured figured maybe someone saw me get on and did not take the seat, but left it vacant for me. There was a man sitting next to the window and two women, two women across the aisle. Third paragraph. The next stop was the Empire Theater and some whites got on. They filled up the white seats and one man was left standing. So the driver looked back and noticed the man standing. Then he looked back at us. He said, let me have those front seats because they were the front seats of the black section. Didn't anybody move. We just sat right where we were, the four of us. Then he spoke a second time. Y'all better make it light on yourselves. That makes it e make, means make it easy on yourself. And let me have those seats. The man in the window seat next to me stood up and I moved to let him pass, pass by me. Then I looked across the aisle and saw that the two women were also standing. I moved over to the window seat. I could not see how standing up was going to make it light for me. The more we gave in and complied, the worse they treated us. And that just means to give in or agree. I'm on the second paragraph now. I thought back to the time when I used to sit up all night and didn't sleep, and my grandfather would have his gun right by the fireplace, or if he had his one horse wagon going anywhere, he always had his gun in the back of the wagon. People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. I was not tired physically or nor more tired than I usually was at the end of a working day. I was not old, although some people have an image of me being old then. I was 42. No, the tired I was, was tired of giving in. The driver of the bus saw me sitting there and he asked, was I going to stand up? I said, no. He said, well, I'm going to have you arrested. Then I said, you may do that. These were the only words we said to each other. I didn't even know his name, which was James Blake, until we were in court together. 
He got out of the bus and stayed outside for a few minutes, waiting for police. As I sat there, I tried not to think about what might happen. I knew that anything was possible. I knew I could be manhandled, which is like treated very physically rough or aggressive or beaten. I could be arrested. People have asked me if it occurred to me that I could be the test case the NAACP had been looking for. I did not think about that at all. In fact, if I had let myself think too deeply about what might happen to me, I might have gotten off the bus, but I chose to remain. Now, the section that we read just a moment ago was um, kind of long, and so you're welcome to rewind and check that again, reread it if you would like to, just to have those ideas fresh in your head. But I want you to think right now, so maybe your partner can help you out, refresh your mind a little bit. What are the important ideas in this excerpt or this piece? What are the important ideas in the part we just read? Turn to your partner. So I'm gonna add some of those things that you might have been thinking as well. Um, so if we're comparing the picture book of Rosa Parks to Rosa Parks, My Story, the firsthand account, let's take a look at that. So Rosa gets on, you might've said, Rosa gets on a bus driven by the same driver who kicked her off a bus 12 years earlier. Okay, Rosa takes a vacant seat. She takes an empty seat. James Blake's, Blake threatens Rosa. Rosa doesn't give up her seat because she's tired of giving in. She said that quote too. Some people think I was tired physically, but it wasn't really just physically, no more than I would have been on a normal working day. She was really, really tired of giving in is really kind of what it was. Um, being complicit, she uses the word comply. That's to be complicit. It kind of means like just to listen, just to just listen to what someone's telling you to do. You just do it. And so kind of like being obedient. And she's saying that's not gonna work anymore. While waiting for the police, Rosa tries not to think of the awful things that could happen to her. It is a firsthand account. Okay, so if you mentioned, well, this is written by her, it's a firsthand account. We're gonna go ahead and add that to that list as well. So we can take a look if we're comparing both of those. So take a look, refresh your memory a little bit. How is a picture book of Rosa Parks a little different than Rosa Parks, my story? So we're gonna answer a few questions about that. So how is the information in the first-hand account the same as the information in the second-hand account? How is it different? So what more do you know about Rose's encounters with James Blake from reading the first-hand account? So think about that first question. How is the information in the first-hand account the same as the information in the second-hand account? So take a moment to think about that. You could have said something like, well, the information in the first-hand account and the second hand are similar because they describe the same event, okay? They use the same year. They both mentioned 12 years later. They both mentioned James Blake. So they have some details that are actually the same details and similar stories. How are they different? You might think, well, they're different because the first hand account, there's a little bit more details to it. She gives details about different stops. She clarifies it wasn't just, I was tired. It was a lot more than that. So you kind of get an idea for Rose's thinking because she's the one telling the story. So you get to hear her thoughts and her feelings and all the things that are racing in her mind. In David A. Adler's version, where he's just saying that she chose to not get up, get up you know, here she's like, no, I made that choice and it was a big choice. I, she was saying that she was thinking about all the things that could happen to her. She could get arrested, she could be beaten, she could be manhandled, but she's making a, a distinct choice to take that risk. Um, what more do you know about Rose's encounters with James Blake from reading the firsthand account? She recognizes him right away. She says, I recognized him right away. He was still tall and heavy, and he had that red, that red rough skin or that pink rough skin, whatever she had said. So she's really describing in detail what he looked like rather than the, the secondhand account is just mentioning his name. So let's review that a little bit. So if we were to compare why, how first and secondhand accounts are different, or why is it valuable to read a firsthand account? And firsthand accounts often include more details, such as the author's thoughts and feelings than a secondhand account. 
Um, you get to knowing and then knowing a person's thoughts and feelings help readers better understand the reasons for that person's actions. We get to think, see a little bit more of the thought process. I also personally think this is my opinion. The reason I think that firsthand account, accounts are um, a good choice or a better choice for reading about an event or a person is I, I feel like it honors them a little bit more and it gets a little bit more at the truth in my personal opinion. And I also added this question, the last question on the slide, who is telling the story and who might benefit from it? So when you are reading anything historical or I mean anything in general, but you news articles, any anything, you wanna ask yourself, well, who is the author of this? Is it first or second hand account? Who could possibly benefit from this story? Who could benefit from the way this story is written? And thinking about having a critical lens, like putting on kind of your critical lens glasses and thinking about Hmm, the story was written and it's presenting a certain people or a certain race or a certain ethnicity in a negative light. I wonder who wrote this. Is it someone who has other kinds of feelings about those people, who has discriminatory opinions about people? And so you want to make sure that you are being critical of what you're reading and you're asking yourself, hmm, who is, who is the author of this? Do they represent the event or the person who, who they are writing about? I think that's kind of an important um, thing to note. Okay, so as we get ready to have IDR today, I want you to take a moment to update your reading log. So if you have a reading log, um, get that out. Let's think about updating that, or you can update it on a separate piece of paper. Um, all the books that you've read so far this year, and that's a nice way of keeping track of maybe different genres you want to explore. You could kind of find patterns, authors that you've been reading, um, types of stories that you really like, and maybe ones that you haven't been reading. Like, I wonder if I could get into a book like that, trying different things. I also want you during your IDR time, so I have the timer over there set for 30 minutes. So during IDR time, I want you to think about if a character, and this is in yellow right here, if a character is in a story is telling the story, we say the story is being told from the first person point of view. So that means you hear a lot of I, me, um, my, mine. Those are the kind of words that tell you, oh, the person telling the story is a character in the story. Okay, they're kind of the narrator. Um, so they're narrating their own story a little bit. So that's going to be a first person point of view. If, and now I'm in green, if a narrator who is not a character in the story is telling the story, we say the story is being told from the third person point of view. So that's kind of like where you see a lot of he, she, they. Um, so they're talking about characters over there. So I'm telling a story, but I'm using he, she, they, him, her. Those kinds of words tell you that, oh, their narrator isn't in the story. They're kind of just telling the story. So take a look at that as you're reading today. So whatever book that you're reading, think about who's telling the story. If you're reading a book about a real, it doesn't actually have to be a real true event, to be honest, but if you're reading a book about an event or a particular group or a person, maybe you're reading a biography, ask yourself, who is telling this story? Is it a first-hand or second-hand account? And think about how does that change the story? Does it matter who's telling the story? Does point of view have a role? Um, if I'm reading about the civil rights, the person I want to read from is someone who was active and who was there in the civil rights. If I'm reading about the story of an African-American activist, I probably want to read the story from them directly. And I want to be very critical of authors who didn't happen to be there, but are writing about it. Have they done their research? Have they interviewed people? And um, have they done a, a good job representing the event or that person? All right, enjoy reading.